and welcome to the Audio File Barista weekly vlog number 99, the vlog where I talk about audio coffee and other things that keep me busy. It is a beautiful, warm, sunny day in Rotterdam and today I have a few interesting things for you. First off, one thing that I have not done for a very long time is to show you a room tour and tomorrow saturday today's friday tomorrow tomorrow saturday there's going to be a room a new room tour video out so make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell so if you don't want to miss those kind of videos that's the way that you should do it for today there's a few things that i want to show you they are downstairs but there's one thing that i want to show you upstairs Okay, so you know I was, I am selling these, the Q Acoustics 3020, and I finally got a buyer. Not the price that I wanted, but as these are still available in shops, new, but because it's an older model, they are very cheap, always offering on sale. So my price was too high. I lowered it a little bit. So the loudspeaker plus the stand, they'll be picked up in a few days. This is the other project that I'm hoping to have finished next week. The metal is already much, much cleaner. I have to do still a little bit of work on the side of the driver. And then we can put in the uh, surrounds and put them back into the box that they belong to. So hopefully this will be done next vlog. And the other thing that I want to show you is downstairs so let's go downstairs okay so these are my new babies that i showed you last week upstairs and now they are here playing from the nakamichi receiver last week i got corrected that sometimes i call thing a amplifier when it's a receiver or something else and that's just because when I'm filming, I sometimes forget these correct words. But this is the receiver, also from Nakamichi, the cassette deck, the CD player. Those are used now to play these nice new edition from Totem, the mites. But that's not what I wanted to show you. I have been changing a few things. One is in this room the setup for my headphones and the other is something that I talked about some weeks ago how to improve my little surround sound setup over here. So those are the two things that I want to talk about today but first a little video about why I decided to change my headphone setup. Let's get into the video. Okay, so last week I told you about the AudioQuest Nighthawk that I got listening to it this week and comparing it with the Hi-Fi Man HE400i that I also have and I'm using the FUBAR number 4 from Firestone Audio. This is a cute little thing. It has a volume knob on the front and it has the input for your headphone and that's it let's have a look at the back okay so this is the rear it has a few inputs one is usb one is optical and one is coaxial and it has a left and right analog output and there is a on and off power switch and there is a high gain low gain switch depending on the headphone that you are using and of course you have your power input now actually when you have a coaxial cable connected and you have your power this thing the power switch is almost impossible to reach so that's according to me is really a design flaw but when it's like this and you can reach it it's okay but i'm having the optical input coming from the chromecast audio so after listening to this trio for a few days, the FUBAR, the AudioQuest Nighthawk and the Hi-Fi Man HE400i, my conclusion is that in this combination the Hi-Fi Man is the better headphone, even though 
the night quest the nighthawk from audio quest is the more comfortable more should i say fun i don't know the bass is a little bit too much but the way they overemphasized it is very enjoyable this one is much more even throughout all the sounds this is more like the bass middle and treble are three separate things this is much more all three together wearing this thing is very comfortable these things are not not uncomfortable but they're a little bit heavier and they uh, put a little bit more pressure on your head this uh, nighthawk is very comfortable now the foobar is just a cheap DAC headphone amp and with the nighthawk i could put it on low gain but with the hi-fi man for some songs i preferred the low gain and for some songs i preferred the high gain so that's probably an indication so this needs more power than this one i guess it could also be that it's just that the quality of the foobar is not that optimal I enjoyed very much to listen to the Nighthawks on this setup. Remember, I'm playing it with the Chromecast Audio at the moment. It is using the internal deck from the FUBAR um, that is in here. So those were my first listening impressions. I gave it enough time to warm up. I gave both of them some time to play. And last night I gave it all a listen and it was actually a bit difficult not in the way that um now let me rephrase this this one it was easily the better one making the sounds of a piano sound more like a piano this one was much more fun to listen to but it's not necessarily that it is how a piano actually sounds but it somehow gave you an impression that things, all the different things inside of the music were much more better uh, distinguishable. You could hear something in the background, even though this one micro resolution was much better. So it was an up and down, depending on the quality of the music. I preferred this one and then I preferred that one, but that's just the way that it sounds if we look at accuracy uh, micro detail and does a piano sound like a piano the hi-fi man absolutely takes the lead but i enjoyed this one very much but then this happened so just for fun after using the nighthawk on the fubar headphone amplifier i decided to because I had this preamp, the AVM plugged in anyways. So I thought, why not try the headphone output from this one with the Nighthawks. And actually this combination does much more justice to the Nighthawk. This sounds much more refined. It's much more one uh, hole. If you look at the music where at the other amplifier, the um, music was a little bit separated the bass was just in a different kind of quality as the highs were now everything came much more together now of course that's not only because of this uh, headphone amp output but also it is now connected to a much better DA converter the PS audio so that's probably a part of it but well, it shows you that a cheap headphone amplifier, if you're looking out for one, maybe you already have some equipment with a good headphone output and a good DAC. Plug it in there instead of trying to find a cheap headphone amplifier that actually doesn't do the job very, very well. So I prefer this much more than the FUBAR. After I found out that this preamplifier actually does a very good job as a headphone amplifier i decided to put it into the system here before that i had only the arkham cd player the stux headphone amplifier and my two 
or let me be precise, three Stax headphones. So what I did is I placed an extra shelf, put the headphone preamp on there, put on another shelf, so I have some room for my headphones. Now I need to pick up a few more of these stands to, because I have more headphones than I show here. For example, over here we also have the Sennheiser HD 600, one of my favorites. And over here there's also a Grado Labs headphone. So what I want to do is to have some more of these for the stacks and some more of these for the Sennheiser at least and maybe two more and get this passive preamp to give it another spot. And the only thing that you see here now is a switch box because that is connected to the quad that is normally here but is now playing upstairs. I hope you still can follow it. So how does this work? Well one of the beautiful things about this Arkham CD player apart from the great sound is that it has two analog outputs. So I have one CD player, one output goes into the headphone amp for the stacks and the other one just goes into the preamp so I can play everything from the CD player through the preamp and listen to that with my wonderful headphones. And this is all very comfortable done from my large listening chair. So I'm very happy with that. A new headphone setup. Okay, what else? Well, some time ago, I believe two weeks ago, I told you I have this, which is also a receiver, an AV receiver. This is from Cambridge Audio, the Azure 340R. This is a very nice thing, but until now, I only played it in stereo with these two Tannoy M1 loudspeakers. Now this is of course mostly to play my uh, DVD player, my VHS player and my Laserdisc player. These are all connected to the Cambridge Audio and I'm playing this through a simple TV. But what I said is, you know, I have another set of these M1 loudspeakers, these Tannoys, and as you can see, over there is one, and the other one is up there. Oh, by the way, these Allison 6s, the drivers that I just showed you that I need to fix, they belong in this box. Now on the front, there's only a tweeter, but this, can I get high enough? Over there you can see the woofer is on top of this cabinet. So that's a very interesting thing. And that is what I'm hoping within a week uh, they are playing again. But back to what I was saying. So I had the Tannoys, I had another set of Tannoys, and I had a surround sound receiver that I only used for stereo. So I thought, well, why not try out to have these two Tannoys placed as a surround sound loudspeaker. Now, of course, normally they should be at the back, at the rear, but as you know, that is where my wall of physical media is. So that's not going to happen. So I thought, well, why not place them up high not straight above the others, but a little bit to the side and see if this makes a difference in the sound. So these two, that one and that one are now connected to the surround sound output of the Cambridge Audio. And I have been playing and enjoying some movies, mostly from Netflix, because the last 
thing that I have connected to this system is an Apple TV, as you can see there. So does this work? Well, yes and no. Let's start with the no. If you are used to a good surround, out, surround sound setup, you will hear these noises, sounds on the side, at the rear, above you, and placement will be very precise. That is not what you're going to get from the setup as I have it now. But comparing the stereo setup with the stereo plus surround setup, the sound becomes much, much, much bigger. It does feel like surround sound. And of course, an extra bonus is that the surround sound channels have a different signal than the stereo channels. So without surround sound channels, whether they are at the correct spot or not, you get extra sound from the music that you normally will never get. So the sound is now much bigger. It feels like surround and because of the placement up top, things like helicopters, you do get a little bit of a feeling that they are above you. So I'm very happy with this setup. Is it perfect? No, not by a long way, but do I enjoy it? Oh yes, I definitely enjoy it. And now I'm looking for a center loudspeaker from this series to place over here and raise the TV a little bit. So I hope that is going to be something that I will, found, will find soon. So let me see if I can get it all in focus. So left, right, left surround, right surround. And you know, this works. I'm actually very happy with it. And I had these loudspeakers and I had this surround AV receiver, so why not? Okay, you guys, that is all that I wanted to talk to you, uh, wanted to share with you for today. Now let's go upstairs and sign off. Okay, so finish, to finish off the video, remember tomorrow there is a new room tour video. Make sure to watch it. For those who have been watching my video now for the first time, thank you for watching. But also, there is also a playlist on Tidal with some music that sounds good on my system. And if you want to test out your system, there might be some nice tracks in there. There's a description, a link in the description box below. Make sure to check it out. Today is Friday, so I say nice weekend and I'll see you next week.